What is a firewall? In this video, we will define the terms network and firewall, differentiate between a boundary firewall and internal firewalls, outline some good practice around configuring firewalls. There are many more different types of firewalls than we were able to cover in this video. Consider this video your high-level introduction to firewalls. To understand what a firewall is, it is helpful to first be familiar with what a network is. A network is the interconnection of computing devices, from computers, to phones, to printers, to smart devices, and so on. Some networks are private and do not allow unauthorized users in. Some, like the internet, are accessible to the public and are called public networks. Firewalls are hardware devices or software programs that regulate the flow of traffic in a network. Firewall rules or policies determine which types of network traffic are allowed and can be based on factors like the traffic source and destination. Checks at the boarding gate at the airport are a bit like a firewall. Before you're allowed on the plane, someone checks who you are, where you're from, and that you're authorized to go to your destination before they let you on the plane. In a similar sense, a firewall may allow or block traffic based on the IP address of the device sending the traffic. IP addresses uniquely identify devices on a network, so comparing the IP address of incoming traffic against a list of known good or bad addresses can help control which traffic is allowed through the firewall. Firewalls can be installed at the intersection of two networks. A firewall, for example, can be deployed to protect a private council network from certain types of internet traffic. They are called boundary, perimeter, or external firewalls in this case. An organization might also decide to place internal firewalls in locations within the network perimeter to give an extra layer of security. For example, a council might use an internal firewall to limit access to and from internal networks that contain sensitive information like finance. It is also possible to configure a firewall that only protects one device or host. This enables creating more personalized restrictions and makes sure the rules apply to the device no matter where it is used. Let's round off with two practices that are good to follow when configuring firewalls. It's a good idea to change any default administrative password for a firewall to an alternative that is difficult to guess. It's important that firewall configurations are well known and understood, so changes to them must be carefully managed and their setup should be reviewed regularly. Use multi-factor authentication or make sure that it can only be configured from agreed locations. This video is part of a series designed to expand your understanding of digital, technology and cybersecurity concepts. To learn more about the terms we covered, please watch our other videos.